Hey every guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a quick video on how to survive a toxic family gathering. Right now we're in the middle of between two major holidays and I wanted to do a video about how to struggle less in being around family that's dysfunctional or if not toxic. Um, and by the way, if you're new to me, feel free to subscribe. Welcome to the channel. Um, if you want more videos, um, more videos are coming up about inner child work, trauma, PTSD, and psychoeducation on the dysfunctional family system. Okay, so many of my clients are struggling right now with either dreading the holiday coming up, um, anticipating that there's going to be bumps with their family, or anticipating shutting down or getting really, really triggered, and also anticipating that when that holiday is over, most likely there's going to be an emotional hangover. So I want to do a quick video on coming up with some tips on how to make that so much less, be triggered for less, less intensity and less time. So um, here are some examples about what some of people would be, would be struggling with, that they go to a, a family gathering and there's sort of like sarcasm, jabs, criticism, um, just the usual family kind of like weird way of connecting. Um, there could be alcoholism going on at a family gathering. There could be um, parents who attack each other or become passive aggressive. And just the usual that if you come from a family system that has that going on, which is many of us, that it can really, really hit you. And when you're triggered in these events, you might shut down. You might, um, you might have a reaction that causes you to get gaslit by somebody about maybe you're being too sensitive. So any, any kind of situation that can, that can come up with um, a family gathering. It's also, to know, it's also good to realize that other people are probably also stressed out about this gathering coming up as well. So it's like people are gonna be on edge, people are sort of probably not gonna be at their best. And most likely everyone's gonna be wanting it to be more than it actually is. So what I'm trying to kind of get at here is to come into this gathering with some skills and some tips that you're less reactive, that you're less triggered, and you get through it in a good enough way. So here's, here are the five tips. The first thing I'm gonna look at is something I call surfing the trigger. I know that that sounds funny, but it's actually a skill based upon the trauma brain. Um, what I'm trying to get people to do is that when we're triggered, our limbic system, our hippocampus, and our amygdala are pretty activated, and we have some adrenaline going through our system. And when that's going on, the best part of our sort of thinking and, and feeling at the same time, which is a function of our frontal lobes, that goes offline. So we kind of might lose our words, we kind of might become overly emotional. And surfing the trigger, there's a trick to do is that when you're at a family gathering, let's say you're at the family table, is to stay in the best part of yourself and to stay sort of like on the beam is sort of to surf that uh, tension meaning that your frontal lobes are the best part of yourself monitors what's going on that it's almost like in a weird in a weird way it's like you're a golf announcer or a sports announcer saying like here comes mom with the passive aggression aimed at dad here comes dad shutting down or here comes dad getting overly flustered here comes you know, my siblings an hour and a half late as expected where we all have to stop and drop everything because they're the more favored sibling. And you're monitoring that and you're more on top of it. And in a way that you're not, the difference is, is that you're not drowning in all of those things, that you're not reactive to um, someone being passive aggressive or someone being phys like sort of like outwardly aggressive or that, or in other words, you may have like a very depressed or alcoholic parent that becomes really mopey and sort of shut down. And you're expecting that. And you're like, yep, they are, they're on their fourth glass of something. This is where it's going to start to get going. And here's my exit strategy. Um, and really that like you are on top of this wave of essentially like drama and drama feelings. And you're on the beam. It's actually this, this what I'm suggesting is actually very, very hard to do. But when someone has to go, I, I, I'll say the same thing to the client if they have to go do like one of those stupid um, performance reviews that with, with kind of a toxic boss or 
a boss that's sort of just like really someone who triggers you and the person is surfing the trigger by just basically saying, yep, here comes the BS about how I'm not working hard enough even though I'm doing you know, like the job of two people. Here comes the very corporate kind of talk about how I should be moving forward and like be super jazzed to work here. And you're anticipating all of those things instead of reacting to it. Hopefully that makes sense. The second piece, the second tip that I have about going into a toxic family gathering is acceptance. And that when you're on your way to this thing is that you remind yourself about your family might be very limited. Your family might not be able to meet you and meet sort of be sort of intimate with you in the way that you want, that you're accepting that most likely the, these family members are trauma survivors too and acceptance and acceptance that it's also going to be kind of a hard situation makes the suffering so much less because when we don't accept it we might be in a little bit of optimistic magical thinking about how it's going to go or not and um really getting to a place that you're not you're almost like essentially what i'm saying with acceptance is to lower your expectations and accepting that um it's maybe not going to be what we want it to be and that some parts are going to be good enough and to also accept that it's probably going to be hard in some ways that is the opposite of being surprised when it becomes dysfunctional or being toxic because when we get surprised we're more inclined to be more triggered and in other words like we can be incredulous about um, going into something that we know is going to be kind of a poop show and then why are we surprised? So this another point, so related to the first one where acceptance is key to really lower your expectations. I know I'm repeating myself so that you're not disappointing yourself and you're not disappointing um, like what you thought it could be. Hopefully that makes sense. The third one is coming up with a strategy and how to deal with this thing going into it where the strategy is about potentially maybe spending less time at this gathering, that you kind of have an exit strategy, that once dinner is over or that kind of a thing, maybe the family tends to mill about till about midnight or something like that, where things tend to be more triggering after that, is that you sort of say up front that you might be leaving early or that you have another engagement sort of elsewhere. So that's the less time piece. And if you're over, if you're at this family gathering for multiple days, like if it's like if it's like a visit, um, self care and routine are key. Meaning that if you're trying to work on yourself and trying to do yoga or try to like go for a run or trying to eat better, is as best as you can, you try to sort of not sort of get into the family's routine of just kind of like flopping on the couch and watching TV. And I know my examples are being really, really specific, but whatever you guys are kind of coming up against, that establishing a routine is as simple as taking a walk and not sort of falling into what the family kind of does. It's like, in other words, you, you take care of yourself. You, you're able to sort of, if, you know, if, any, if people stay up till one or two drinking and watching TV, is you try to go to bed early and it's okay to excuse yourself. One of those cases that if you feel, um, compelled to join in, which it's sort of like with our families, it's like when, when in Rome and if we're trying to be healthy and the family tends to have an unhealthy family lifestyle, there's a really strong pull to, to, to engage in that stuff again, because that's how we grew up. Um, so strategy is key and to almost think about like coming up, writing down a game plan that I'm going to try to go for a walk. I'm going to do a lot of walks with the dog. I'm going to try to like not eat as much sugar. Or if my mom's getting crazy, I'm just going to excuse myself in a good enough way and try to be kind and gentle while I do that. So lots going on with this. The fourth one is to connect with support. And this one I find is vital because um, to really be able to connect, if you have people in your life that get this stuff, um, sometimes I'll have, if a client is going into a toxic family gathering like this, I will sort of suggest that they send me an email just saying sort of like surfing the trigger, trying to do my best here. Um, and so I wouldn't be able to respond to the email, but basically that, that those kinds of actions is what keeps us in our frontal lobes. I'll be doing other videos that talk about that. And I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you guys. But connecting with other people could be as simple as texting a friend, 
the, to almost like vent a little bit, like sort of like, oh my God, my dad passed out on the couch or my mom just lost it about how no one's helping her. Um, those kinds of things is sort of that you're accepting those things and you're also able to connect with somebody and just to get somebody to so almost like to say, oh my God, you know what I mean? I'm same here, you know, um, that would be amazing. And if you, it's okay if you don't have those people in life, you can even use this video to make a comment in the section of just basically like sort of like 11 a.m. Christmas Day, barely hanging on, you know, like that's okay. But that is an action oriented thing. I know it sounds weird, but it's an action oriented thing that keeps our frontal lobes online, our best self online as best as we can so that we're not drowning in these triggers. And lastly, the last tip that I have is something called finding your adult. And in the work that I do, it's parts work, it's inner child work. It's, uh, it's close to something called internal family systems. But in, in, the, in the work that I do, there's really just two parts and that's the adult part of ourselves. And then there's our inner child and that inner child can be in very different sort of developmental stages and ages. Um, it's not the only type of therapy in town, but it just happens to be the one that I that's in my heart and I do is finding your adult is really about protecting yourself and being your best self going into a tricky situation. Coming back to that, if you had to do one of those stupid, I hate performance reviews, um, but one of those stupid performance reviews is I will have a client try to think about how do I go into that with my best self and that where I'm lowering my expectations. Um, I'm not giving my boss such power over me as the authoritarian person in my life. And I'm protecting my inner child from becoming reactive. Because if a, if a toxic boss is sort of saying, you know, your TPS reports are really, really slagging behind. It's like basically if you come from a, a shaming family, um, you might shut down a little bit. You might lose your words. You might sort of really sort of it might stay with you for a couple days when it when but there might be a the adult part of you. And you guys probably notice sees it as BS, sees it as it's like the job doesn't define your life. So it's working with those two parts that is very, very helpful. And, and most of what I'm suggesting in this video, all of these tips are designed to get your frontal lobes more online, which is sort of the more um, get it together part of our brain. The amygdala, which is in the hippocampus and the limbic system, those are sort of emotional, body and memory, emotion, creativity um, parts of our brain that it's like we have an emotional body memory when we're being criticized. So finding your adult is really protecting yourself and it's actually protecting other people from becoming reactive. So it's sort of like you're at the family table and just there's criticism or there's stuff flying around or, or even see a sibling getting criticized or someone drinking too much, all of these examples that I'm talking about. Finding your adult is not reacting, is being able to be able to think and feel at the same time as opposed to being all feeling. Um, and be finding your adult can even be about setting a boundary. Um, you know, just basically just say sort of like, you know what guys, I just wanted to have a good meal today and I didn't really want to talk about my job or my dating life or all that kind of stuff. So let's just sort of, you know, get along and change the subject. Like that may be incredibly hard to do around our family system, but it's the adult part of our brain that can do that. So just a recap, surf the trigger. That is just basically being on top of the drama. Acceptance is to struggle less by lowering expectations. You go into this thing knowing that these people are trauma survivors too most likely, and they're not capable of either maybe getting it or not being kind of a mess themselves. The third part, having a strategy that you know that you're maybe gonna spend less time if that's an issue, that you're gonna try to take care of yourself more, that you're gonna excuse yourself. Um, and not lose a routine where you may have to spend weeks about kind of building up to get back to. Um, connecting with people who are supportive. Again, you can use the comment section of this video to just say that you're kind of powering through it. And finding your adult is really finding the part of you that wants to be better, that wants to be more on top of it. And essentially what that comes down to is being on the beam that you're not being reactive. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope you're having a good holiday season and stick around for more videos and just click the subscribe button and you'll get you'll get them. Hope you're well. Bye bye.